Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. I um, hope you're well on this um, gorgeous morning. It is gorgeous. It's, it still feels like spring. There's a, there's a sort of slight chill in the air, but I quite like that with the sunshine. And um, so I thought I'd take it outside today. It's uh, warm enough. And uh, take it onto the deck of my lovely new building. And uh, yes, let's, uh, let's get on with the yoga. No? Um, what have we got? Uh, question wise, let's see. Uh, sorry. Oh, there it is. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Let's see what we got. Oh, it's Jules. Hi, hi Jules. Nice to see you. Uh, we have a question from Barbara. Any twists or forward bends with the help of the breath and where to find support? Okay, Barbara. Um, yeah, that's, that's quite a good question. Uh, do feel, you know, just because there's a question up there doesn't, doesn't mean it's the only one I'm going to answer. <laughs> so feel free to uh, add questions as we go. I, once I've started, I might miss miss your thing, but we can always come back to it another day. Um, but yes, it's good to have a few questions to choose from, but uh, I'm very happy with Barbara's questions. They're, they're very, always very good. Uh, she's becoming very familiar with the work now because I'm working with her um, on the um, weekly support sessions, um, interactive ones. So um, so her, her questions are quite sort of related to what we're working on and um, specific principles, you know. So, but uh, yeah, feel free to add to these questions so anyway any twists forward bends with the help of the breath and where to find support it's quite specific <laughs> um twists forwards bend twists forward bends breath and support okay let's give this some thought or let's embody it that's the that's the way i work these things out um, twists Forward bends. So if, if there's a question around something, about something, it's usually because there's a feeling of complication. Um, and and that, that's what allows me to come up with some solutions. Um, because um, the complications that we experience are quite uh, reasonably commonplace. Um, as in most of us, uh, have, yeah, most of us sort of have the same reasons for uh, feeling restricted in our movement or feeling complications in our movement. Um, and it's around conflict. It's around um, conflict. Uh, well, trying to get the body to do something that, the, that in, in places where the body doesn't want to do that. <laughs> so, for example, um, the thing that goes wrong in twists is that people try and twist from the lumbers. And they pull themselves around with the lumbers and the hips and the groins and and then uh, or externally with the shoulders you know um it's a uh, that's what goes wrong with the twists and lumbers aren't really designed for that um if you if you look at the structure of a of the lumbar vertebra they have um, processes that sort of meet to prevent um to prevent too much movement you know um and you might think that that's support, you know, and and it sort of it is, it is, it, but it's um, it's not to be uh, pushed against or hung from. It's not that's not what it's for. It's actually um, a limit to range of movement. Twists are meant to come from the rib cage, from the rib cage on the upper spine, the dorsal spine, and if you look at the shape of the vertebra there, the the way the Spinous processes sit over each other. It's designed perfectly for the job. You know, it's the, they're like chevrons in the way they slide over each other, and um, so they. But um, because we are stiff in our backs, because of the way we breathe and all sorts of things, um, uh, the upper back tends to be less mobile for most people. So, um, so what do we do? We we twist with what we've got available, which is our lumbers and our necks, and. Um, they're not really meant so much for the job. Um, so, yes, that, that, that's uh, that's a sort of description of what goes wrong. Let's um, let's look at what we can do to invite uh, freedom of that movement. 
So my first port of call will be the, the space, space in the numbers. Um, a reason, ah, I don't want to go too much into the technology of it, of it if you like. Uh, I'd rather just um, get you to experience the practice. Uh, we, but just to give you an idea of why we're doing this, um, if the, the breath, and that was part of the question, if the breath is a sedentary one, in that it's all about collapsing the belly to breathe in and then um, collapsing the chest to breathe out, then um, there's going to be a sort of downward pressure uh, within the abdominal space that kind of interferes with movement. And that, that's true of forward bends as well. You know, if, if, you have a, uh, if you have a downward pressure in your belly then, and then you try and hang off the lumbers, uh, um, and, and pull on the base of the spine, then um, <laughs> you're going to be nat quite naturally restricted by the body's own sort of uh, reactiveness to the insult to the spine, you see. Um, so basically, um, my clues are always pretty much the same. Um, first of all, you have to feel supported. And when you're hanging off the back, the back is not supported. So what you need to do perhaps to find space to twist, uh, to find the uh, support that will allow you to twist is to support yourself. And um, if I was standing, I'd be working out how to do this with my feet. Um, I could do it with my base, but I, I want to give, if you're sitting, um, it's quite nice to give yourself a sense of how, <coughs> pardon me, uh, give you a sense of how uh, give yourself a sense of how if you allow um, a spaciousness in the core of the body, if you allow yourself to be supported away from the base, as opposed to lifting, um, as opposed to lifting yourself, if you allow yourself to be supported away from your base and sort of leave your base behind, you'll get this um, sense of spaciousness in the core of the body and a, and a freedom freedom around the back, back of the spine because we know no longer carrying our weight in a downward fashion or lifting our weight within, in an upward fashion. So that sense of uh, allowing space as you support yourself with your arms essentially. Now you don't have to be doing lotus, <laughs> just uh, any, anything, you know, anything, anything that gives, takes the responsibility off your sit bones um, will allow the core of the body to change. I'll just get my belly out so you can see. Um, so when I, when I put my hands down, the the belly sort of is no longer being pushed down upon by the pressure of the organs. So the I can I can hold it back uh, with effort, and that's um, that's something most people most of us might do to support ourselves. But um, if you can find external support, then you get more of a fluid response, and that that's the beginnings of Udayana Bandha, and, uh, if you want to know <laughs> what, uh, the yoga technique. So making a bit of space. And with that space in place, what can happen is the ribs, the rib cage around that space can start to, with the release of the breath, can start to sort of drop. It starts to drop around the upward moving space. And it's when the, the ribs get a chance to do that, that we, we can start to find um, more natural ways of twisting in the upper spine. So is that uh, and the, the breath is involved. Um, there's a breath I invite quite regularly called Seat Kari, which sort of describes this um, lightness in the core um, as the breath arrives with the sound seat. It's a smile across the heart. And uh, the emptying of the breath um, doesn't sort of make the chest heavy. Instead, it's a release away from space um, as you let the ribs go as you a nice cup of tea sound <laughs> okay seat kari and uh, if you're able to be relaxed in your groins relaxed in the lower half of the body as you do this it'd be hard, quite hard work for the arms but you might notice how turning um, obviously using the purchase of your uh, hands is much more to do with the rib cage and the upper spine and particularly with the release of the breath because when the when the ribs drop they drop somewhere and they, they drop to the ground um, 
uh, the, the the advantage of finding this kind of um, breathing response, the, the spaciousness and the uh, anchoring down around that around that space, is that you end up with a sort of fluid mechanism that is self-sustaining, and an upward the upward action, the upward release of pressure is then sustained by the gathering in and down and round that upward moving space as you release the breath. So we end up having a breath that supports this sort of uh, freedom. Okay, so when we, we stop pulling on the spine essentially. Um, when the ribs can anchor down, they do so in a, um, it, it's to do with ambulation, it's to do with movement, it's to do with walking. So as well, as well as side bending, which is one way the, the ribs can anchor down, which tends to make you heavy on that side, it doesn't have to, it tends to, there's also a sort of a kind of a twisting movement that is part of um, the ambulatory mechanism, if you like. So what you can do is having made some space in the core of the body using external support, uh, allowing the breath to express that spaciousness by arriving across the heart wide, and you can use your limbs to widen to help that. And if that sort of arrangement stays with you as you release the breath, then there'll be something fundamental that happens uh, in the core of the body, as in the the emptiness remains, there'll be some physical activity in there, some core responsiveness as you release the breath, but the ribs, more importantly, anchor down around that space, and in doing so, they kind of connect to the base, or well, they should connect to the base, because that's where your support is. Um, if it's still your hands, then that's where, the, where they connect, so you get a sense of landing on a fist, and um, you know, the fist you're landing on sends the ribs, tends to send the ribs away from that touch and towards the, to, towards the ground. And you might find, you might notice if you're doing one arm to create space, when you release the breath, the ribs sort of move away from that arm and aim towards the opposite side, the opposite sit bone. And if you can get that sense of the ribs anchoring to the opposite base, then you kind of don't need the arm anymore. Okay. Same with the same with the the opposite arm. Even though you're turning to this side, um, let's put the legs this way. Even if you're turning to this side, I'm doing this because I'm going to have a, involve a, myself in a forward bend in a minute. Um, so for, from this arm. I've got space in the core of the body, but the ribs empty away from the arm and towards the opposite base. From this arm, same, same thing is true, even though I'm turning in this direction, the ribs are being sent away from the use of that hand, that arm, and as I release the breath, as well as helping support the upward sort of inner space, when I release the breath around that space, those ribs are sent away and towards the opposite base. <sighs> so, it's a function of the release of the breath. And if I can if I can continue to release away from my arms, essentially, so in other words, don't pull my shoulders down, if I can be um, allowing the breath underneath my wings and allow the ribs to anchor down away from that, just a little bit of touch, perhaps, on this front leg thigh to help um, feel that lightness in the core. But I can start to give to my base through the release of the breath. And the, the giving, the letting go, is the motivation for the twist, because that's how the ribs work. See? Um, there's always a crisscross thing going on. The, the front ribs kind of um, rest towards the back. The back ribs kind of rest towards the base of the front. The side ribs kind of rest to the opposite side. So everything has a sort of crisscross nature in its sort of relationship to support so that you are so that letting go of tension and letting go of the breath turns you essentially in the upper spine and um, if you've got your hand up your back you might be able to feel it and it's that release of tension that release of breath from the spine through your base that motivates you into a twist 
Uh, I know uh, sitting is difficult for people. Um, I tend to shy away from it normally, but it's what I want to do, so, <laughs> so I apologize. Um, you could modify this by having um, blocks underneath you or something, make it easier. Um, I've got something coming up that would help if you're interested. But anyway, um, where was I? Oh yes, we're gonna to turn to the other side. Because what I would like to do, what I'd like to turn this into, how much time have I got? Let's see, yes. What I'd like to uh, turn this into is a, a, a twisting forward bend, so I can follow the wholeness of the question. So, um, first of all, creating a bit of space. And I'm deliberately using my arms for that. And, and if you do have trouble sitting, you know, leaning back would, would give you the same, the same sort of lightness in your base so that the core of the body could empty away from it. And then same use of the hands would help the ribs anchor away from the use of the hands and pull and be drawn towards the base. So it's not, you know, we don't have to, um, we don't have to practice our restrictions. We can practice solutions, okay? So whatever you're doing, wherever you are, use your hands, use your arms to um, let go of your base so you can let go of the ground on the inside. The breath needs to accommodate that, and that's that sort of smiling breath across the heart. And the release of the breath needs to allow the ribs to drop away from the arms to sort of land on the base. Uh, it'll be connected to your hands if they're still there supporting you. But the connection is that the ribs tend to move away from the same side arm and towards the opposite side base, opposite side leg. Um, so the ribs tend to, if you've got that space, that means you're not holding yourself down with your base or holding yourself up with your back, then the release of the breath within that, within that spaciousness in the core of the body, tends to allow the ribs to anchor away from the same side arm and towards the opposite, the opposite side base. So you get a twist going on. And if you can uh, organize things, e even if it's here, if you can organize things, so you get a sense of the spine relating to the base with the release of the breath. And by the spine, I'm talking about the rounded parts, the, um, the sacrum, the bump of the base of the neck down to the heart, those parts of the spine within the body, well, at the back of the body, they want to move closer to the center of the body, they want to become more central. If they can drop through the body to the touch, then what you get is lightness and a rhythmic sort of release into movement that follows the release of the breath. And that's what we're looking to create sense of how to let go into a twist there'll be there'll be intense effort um well there'll be intense something intense going on uh, but it will be around the creating conditions that allows that release of tension and it, it, the movement will be much less in the lumbers and much more through the entirety of the rib cage the entirety of the spine it, do, it doesn't exclude the lumbers it's just they they move a tiny, tiny, tiny bit uh, over their over their sort of housing, and you don't sort of stress that connection. You don't push against it. You don't pull on pull on it. It's just a base from which you grow up in space as the spine releases forwards and through and down through your base. Okay, so it's exactly the opposite parts of the spine that allow the twist. There's the sacrum resting forwards through the um, pelvis as opposed to hanging back and it's the upper spine from the bump base and neck down resting forwards through the ribs as you as you release tension the forward bend part is not this is not different um, there's nothing wrong again with the lumbers there's nothing wrong with allowing the lumbers to um, take part in the forward bend but if you pull on them with the idea of stretching what you're actually put what you're actually stretching is the jo junction between the lumbar curve and the, uh, the lumbar curve and the sacrum and it's sort of uh, if you can imagine that that's the sacrum and that's the lumbar curve 
Yeah, it's back to front on here. So uh, if that, yeah. So that's my that's my sacrum. Uh, that's my lumbar curve. So that's my sacrum. That's my lumbar curve. If you sort of overly pull on that, then you you cause a strain on that joint, and it's the source of many many prolapses. And when, when people pull on their backs, they do forward bends. So a forward bend is not is not this where you're trying to stretch your back. That's a, that's not what you want to do. What you want to do is uh, let's get this right. Okay. What you want to do is you want to simply. Uh, I can't, I'm trying to. Can't see what I'm doing. Hang on. What you want to do is you want to simply release that tension, any holding up tension. You don't want to pull on it. There wants to be a, a, um, a slight release of tension, and the only way that that happens is not when the it's not when you pull on the uh, lumbar spine. It's when the 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 sacrum releases within the pelvis. That's what allows the sort of soft forward bend feeling. And sacrum releases within the pelvis. And that's a sort of turning inside out feeling. So instead of uh, pulling on the spine above the sacrum, the sacrum underneath the, the lumbars sort of rests forwards a bit. If that makes any sense at all. Um, <clears throat> very detailed. But um, a way of finding that is let's see it's uh, a way of finding that is from your base if you if you if you use your touch to sort of pull yourself closer to your touch then um as opposed to lurching forwards with the body over your base if you use your touch to, to support yourself forwards then what happens is there's a turning inside out at the base that brings the base of the spine further forwards and that means you're going to have much less strain on the spine when you relax through the entirety of the lumbar curve. That action of turning your inside, self inside out, it's not, it's not a lift, it's, it's an internal action that helps the core of the body come up, that helps the ribs anchor around that space. It's all part of the same sort of action of embrace, where you, you're sort of bringing yourself into the middle of things and closer to the act to what you're doing. So, I mean, the same with the upper spine. Instead of reaching out and hanging off, which causes all sorts of problems, there's a feeling of bringing yourself closer to your hands, closer to your hands through the body, so that the upper spine is through. Um, so, so closer to your feet from the base, so that the lower base of the spine is through. And then when you're through, when you're more centrally through the body, there will be more space on the inside strangely it's just the way the body works as a fluid mechanism uh, with this sort of embrace quality you'll be neither uh, lifting up nor hanging down what you can do then is use your touch for support as you breathe and then when you release the breath once again the core empties away from the base so you've got lots of space in your hips the ribs empty down towards your base in a crisscross fashion. So these ribs over there, these ribs over there. And the result is this sort of wave-like release into movement. Not because you're stretching anything, but because you've created the condition of ease for the spine. And it's that, that ease, that, that, set, that relaxing of the roundnesses of the spine into the body, into the body, that allows you and the lumbers and neck to just let go a little to be more rested in the forward bend so <clears throat> so you set it up with an embrace with a gathering towards your touch you breathe and then when you release the breath stay where you are but release the breath within and when things have changed on the inside that's the time to let go of tension gently there should be no particular pull on the spine breath by breath okay uh, by the way, you know when you're um, when you have one leg forwards like that and you're doing a forward bend, it is a twist 
plus a forward bend. It's not a, it's not a side bend. Uh, if you make it a side bend you'll, um, and try and get your face to the knee, and you're doing something strange around the base of the spine again. So um, it's, it's good to be clear about what you're doing. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay, so um, what time is it? Let's see. Oh, it's nearly time, so I think that's about it. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, those, those of you that, um, <clears throat> if you're interested in sitting, uh, I, I've got a, I've got a, um, an, another garden yoga uh, weekend coming up the end of May. Uh, last week uh, is it twenty fifth, twenty sixth, something like that. Um, so it's three day one over the bank holiday, uh, and I've called the first day. I'm doing a three day workshop. The first day, the first day is going to be around. It's called Master Your Lotus. And for those of you that uh, would like to, you know, be able to find ease in the way you use your <laughs> Uh, Lotus, then uh, it'll be appropriate. But it's also appropriate for anyone that um, is very sensibly restricted from trying those things because of knee problems. Okay, um, knee problems in in cross-legged sitting arise through trying to distort the knee joint in an attempt to sort of stretch the body into submission. And uh, there's ways of um, putting the body together. That allows that allows a different sort of freedom, where there is no strain on the joints whatsoever. And um, so, you know, the first day is called Master Your Lotus, and uh, the the structure of the day is the morning. Morning is a guided session. There's a lunch break uh, where you can do what you like. You can hang out with your packed lunch, or you can go to the local park or beach or whatever. And then the afternoon is more of a sort of free for all. It, it'd be kind of a self-practice session really in this amazing space uh, but I'll be there practicing as well and if you have any questions I'll be available for to help you know um, that's the structures of structure of each day so the first one's around um, seated practices essentially uh, the second one is going to be around restorative practices I, I've got a very particular take on what actually restores um, the body's function through restful practices and um, yes it, it's it's very different from what is known or known as restorative yoga and it's incredibly effective um, requires a precision and I'll be very much there to show you how to find that precision um, and then again after uh, lunch break and afternoon to explore for yourself um, and if you want any help I'll be there third day I'm thinking I was I was going to make it a free for all sort of open workshop session, but um, pranayama, uh, the the pranayama course we did for the spring cleanse was was so effective. Uh, people really liked it, and it's so important. And um, so what I thought I'd do is a morning of pranayama and posture, uh, showing the sort of integration of the two because uh, people tend to see them as separate practices or, or um, they tend to do the breath and then do the postures whereas actually if you can find the nature of both they 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 mesh in such a beautiful way um, that makes life so simple um, so yeah three days of workshops you can book either of them individually um, I think it's 50 pounds a day or you can uh, take a retreat in my garden over three days over the bank holiday weekend um, and for I think I, I made it a very good price 135 pounds for the three days uh, that, that's that's the thing I really wanted to let you know about because I'm quite you know, I'm excited about um, continuing to use my garden space and expanding upon its use and this glorious weather if it's as good as this we'll, we'll be spreading out into the garden if not we'll be in my lovely space um, with the heating on and so it'd be fine, whatever, whatever the weather, um, and even even when it's um, grey, sitting in that space and seeing the garden, being close to nature is amazing feeling. I'm so, I'm so pleased with the whole thing. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, 18th before that, 18th of May this weekend coming, I'm in Ang Maring on Saturday. There's a workshop with one of my uh, long-term teachers, Cindy Robbins. Um, it's her studio. She's she invites me over every now and again every now and again to um, share my stuff with her students. She's spreading the work nicely. Uh, I think there's a few spaces 
on that. Um, there's a morning workshop, afternoon workshop, or you can do both for a discount. Um, the Friday before, my if you're up in Scotland, um, uh, particularly close to Glasgow, anywhere near Glasgow, um, go to, and you're a woman, <laughs> go to Abigail's uh, Pelvic Health Workshop. Um, she works... Uh, the, these workshops are exclusively for women, so you can go deep into into things without. Um, well, you can you're free to, you know, to go deep into whatever you need to go to. And she's very experienced in hel helping with many um, common issues, uh, physical issues to do with the pelvis, uh, the, um, the the womb, uh, and she's uh, very experienced with how to sort out and and the endometriosis and uh, highly highly skilled in um, uh, yoga for birth and uh, whatever it is but um, uh, oh yes um, what's the what's the thing I wanted to remember oh um, around sort of yoga and menopause all issues that are kind of taboo and <laughs> not really talked about in in, in yoga in any particular in a particularly uh, useful fashion she's got a very specific take on the thing it really, really works. So if you're if you're interested, grab a seat, uh, grab a place on her Friday workshop up in in the Moment Centre in Glasgow on the 24th of May. Um, other than that, uh, I have other workshops coming up, and I'm at yoga festivals and things, and I think that'll do. I'll leave it there. Um, if you enjoyed that, then feel free to share it around, and uh, I shall see you soon. Uh, I'm Mark Jack Viva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga signing off. Lots of love to you. Bye now.